open wide and say, ah, then chew. The sandwich, fast, handy, user-friendly, modern eating for a modern age. You'd think we'd invented it, but we didn't. This man's great-great-great-great-great-grandfather did, and gave it his name inadvertently. This man is John Montague, the 11th Earl of Sandwich. And this is his ancestor, the 4th Earl, a man too busy, apparently, to sit down to eat off a plate. So he asked that his food be served between slices of bread. It was just like you or, or I. He, he wanted something he could eat easily with one hand. And a whole new way of eating was born, even if the Earl was unaware. The joke is he, he never knew he'd invented it. It had to take someone to come along and say, we'd like one like Sandwich had. <laughs> and so that's how it began 250 years ago. For the record, the first Earl of Sandwich in the 1600s almost chose the name Portsmouth instead, in which case we'd all be eating Portsmouths now. Instead, we're eating sandwiches. So many of them, it's a multi-billion dollar a year business in the U.S. and Britain where they were invented. Strangely, though, the sandwich business passed the sandwich family by. They were too busy running their estates and being aristocrats who don't do vulgar things like run sandwich shops until they realized the estate was falling to pieces and sandwiches were where the money to fix the roof might come from. You're right, it's needed. But in, in this day and age, the 11th Earl, the 11th Earl could clearly stand the income as well. The, the 11th Earl, who is me, yes. needs the income. Absolutely. So it's a good thing the 11th Earl has a son named Orlando with a nose for business. Friday salad and brownie day. Yeah. He decided to do what all those generations before had shunned, go into the sandwich business. How many generations were there, count them, between the 4th and the 11th? I suppose something like seven. Correct. And none of those people thought that opening a sandwich shop was exactly the way they wanted to go. Well, I think it's a, it's a, a state of the times. I think aristocrats have to move with the times. And, and speaking, you know, speaking from our own experience, we think retail is right at the heart of a society, of an economy. I say, you're right, eh? Yeah. Can I get the Hawaiian barbecue? Yes. So the sandwiches went to work, opening not only a sandwich business, but inventing for Britain a new kind of sandwich business that would live up to the family name. Here you order number 167. One pint, two, please. They found a gap in the market, the made-to-order hot sandwich on bread baked before your eyes. They built it, and the people came. These sandwiches may have been latecomers to retail, but they learned fast. There's your change and two free coffees any other morning. Did you feel somehow an added sense of responsibility, the weight of history upon the cutting board, if you will, to... <laughs> to come up with something that was worthy of the name. I, I think that's exactly right. It was, it, having a good name is very nice, but it counts for nothing in business. It's a very competitive world. But nobody's offering what the Earl of Sandwich offers. So we're going to actually put some of this to the test, I think, now. Roast beef, an Earl of Sandwich club, and... This is the Earl of Sandwich's version of the BLT. This is the BLT here with a lot, a lot of L. It's not something you can eat elegantly. It's a good BLT. The formula has been successful enough that with an American investor, the Earl of Sandwich now has major outlets at Disney properties in Florida and France and is expanding with other outlets in the US, Britain and Europe. The fourth Earl was clearly on to something and left a rather useful legacy to the 11th and beyond. I'm enjoying going back into history and celebrating the fact that this is carried on from one generation to another and may, may it continue. You may be able to fix the roof. And then we'll be able to fix the roof, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs>